Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. I wanted to continue my thoughts and some experiments on uh, ideas about how we can debunk the science of gravity as a force based on the supposed mass of the spinning ball Earth. Now let's just try to separate for a moment the idea that we are on a ball spinning in space and that we have to have some kind of force pulling us onto the Earth to stop us flying off from the centrifugal force of the supposed spinning ball. Let's just consider that um, a mistake could have been made in linking up the scientists throughout history, their different theories. We have Galileo, who I know was born and died before Newton was on the scene, just to clarify. But, uh, of course, Newton continued uh, Galileo's work, uh, uh, for example, on friction and how friction is an opposing force when you want to move something forward or in any other direction. Okay, so friction uh, is something that Newton carried over into his thought experiments about how about forces and momentum, okay? Galileo also presumed or assumed that uh, uh, planets or the wandering stars like Mars that he could see through his new telescopes, the first telescopes, um, wouldn't have been very clear, but he thought he saw a ball. So here we have this idea being carried over into Newton's theories that uh, the planets or wandering stars or lights in the sky, as far as we know, are balls. And then Newton tries to come up with mathematics, which is what he specialized in, rather than actually looking at uh, doing physical experiments. Um, he has the idea that the Earth is one of those balls because we are focusing on the sun being at the center of our heliocentric solar system. Okay, so let's just try and separate this theory that has never been 100% proven. It's still a theory. That's why people are getting excited about gravitational waves. Why would we need any more proof apart from men landing on the moon and things like that? So, Let's just separate from all that. The moment we mention the word mass or gravity, we perceive this as our home spinning violently around a sun. Okay, let's just think about what we experience and how the things work on Earth without any relationship to Earth's place in the sky. Okay. So, of course, we have uh, objects that are denser or heavier than the air, the medium around them, falling to the ground until they reach a more dense medium. Now, of course, you have nothing more dense than the entire Earth. It is the densest thing around, okay? I've got some other props here. I've got a coconut, I've got a beer can and a rock, and I've got some water, another medium. The air is a medium. Water is the next medium down. And it is more dense, so it is always at a lower level than the air. Rain drops in balls, fall, uh, keeping balls due to their surface tension, maybe. That's a perfectly scientific explanation for how water will form a ball through its uh, surface tension, as soon as it hits the ground or more water, then it becomes one with the water and it actually becomes one with the ground as well. Okay. Hi Kat, you're joining the experiment. Okay. So, we're told that the ball falls to the ground because something is pulling it to the ground. But if I throw the ball in the water, it suddenly stops being drawn towards the center of the earth floating on the water. Nothing is pulling it down anymore. It's mostly air, so it's maintaining an equilibrium with the difference in the elements. A small part of the ball is uh, in the water, okay? 
So we have water made up of hydrogen and oxygen and this is meeting an equilibrium between them. If I want to push it down, I do have to use some force. But there's no other force pulling this down at the moment. Okay? Yeah? So as soon as we enter a different medium, we have the physics suddenly changes. Fish in water, any sized animal that lives in the water, is not subject. To gravity, unless you're a crab with a shell that makes you denser than the water, or something like that. Fish, and whales, and octopus, and all that, all those animals, they change their density in order to go up and down within the medium of water. Fish expand air inside them, just like a submarine, in their swim bladders, taking up more space, but therefore being less dense, because they've got expanded air inside them. When they want to go down, they, just like a submarine, they compress the air, and the air takes up less space in the volume of that craft, or the fish's swim bladder gets smaller and it has less volume so it is therefore more compact, more dense than the water around it until it sinks to a level of the water's equilibrium at that depth. Okay. There's no gravity involved as soon as you start dealing with water. Things, the physics of water just changes completely. So we're always taught, being taught about things being pulled down to the ground through the air. The air is the medium. So here we have the ball and the coconut and they will probably fall through the air at the same speed at the same time. No contest there. All right. Is it a force based on the mass and specific size and diameter of the ball earth that makes things fall this fast? speed that is rel relative to the density of the earth or not we can't tell we can't know but you could create a mathematical model based on that you could start with the speed with which you see things fall and then create a whole formula from that with assumed distances and sizes of our planet and other planets if you wanted to, yeah? You can simply start with a number and build on it to create a mathematical model. That's how they've done the heliocentric model. There's an assumption that we're on a ball spinning through a place with no air. So we travel forever. And that it has its motion forces to prevent things from being affected by that motion. All imaginary stuff, not based on what we see and experience here on Earth. So, if it falls at a certain rate, it's not because we're on a spinning ball, necessarily. Got some leads, and of course, you know what's going to happen is that the the air is an element not dissimilar to water, but less dense than water, but it is still soupy compared to lighter airs like helium, which again will rise, not due to any force pushing or pulling it. In fact, whenever we think about force, the force needed to push something along or a force required to stop that thing being pushed along is for left, right, sideways, forwards, backwards, whatever you want to do. But when it comes to lifting or levitating objects into the air, physics changes 
or when we are talking about rising or lowering objects in the medium of water, the physics changes. We have to either manipulate the object itself or we have to manipulate the element surrounding the object. We do not necessarily have to defy a force that is pulling things down. So the leaves and the ball will fall at different rates because the air is kind of soupy and the shape of those leaves puts up some resistance. But then if we take these two cans, one that we know will simply float on the water because it is a certain volume and it has a certain density. Here's a crushed can. Has the same mass. But it, when I take the air out, is going to sink and this one's going to float. All right, it's taking up a different amount of space. It's density relative to its volume has changed from this to this. And that's how it works. It's not being pulled down 